Thank you for taking a minute to go over this basic training acknowledgement form. This tutorial will give you some insight as to how to fill this form out quickly, easily, and what to do with the form. I want to start with the first section, uh, basic employee safety training verification. These four boxes here will have to be checked for each employee, and these are acknowledging that the named employee has been provided the necessary training to enable him to work safely. So whatever training is required of them to work for their job and occupation, you have provided that, you will check here. Second thing, the named employee has been trained in proper use, adjustment, limitations, maintenance, and storage of personal protective equipment. You also check this box. And then induction training. The employee will be given induction training that covers the guidelines and the contractor safety guidelines um, requirement from Cargill. And specifically, the fourth one here, they've been given information which covers work permits, including the permits themselves, when they're needed, and how to obtain them. These four boxes must be checked. The next section here, other site required verifications. The first one is talking about your superintendent, your foreman, someone running the crews. If they're a superintendent or a foreman, they will have to have an OSHA 10 hour construction safety course or equivalent. So if they are and they have that, you will check right here and you will send this one of the documents you will send to Safety Plus. The second box here is the, if is the named employee not a superintendent or foreman, so everybody else, and do they have an OSHA 10 hour or equivalent? Now you're going to check yes or check the box for yes or leave the box blank for no. If they do have this um, OSHA 10 hour or equivalent, then you will send proof to Safety Plus. The last one's reserved. All right, the third section down here, this is specific training for tasks that the employees will be doing while they're on site. If your employee is accessing a scaffold or has to wear a body harness, um, wear a respirator, then you will check each of these boxes that they're going to actually do on site. They may be qualified to wear a respirator, but if they're not going to wear it on site, don't check this box. By checking these boxes, you will let us know what that employee is going to be allowed to do, you're authorized to do while they're on site, and we will require verification of training for these items. So take time and review these items, and again, only mark these if they are trained and will be doing this activity while on site. Put your company name in here, the employee name, the date. The ID number is totally dependent on you, whatever ID number you want, or no ID number at all. It does not matter. You need someone represented from the company needs to print their name and sign their name. And they're acknowledging, they're acknowledging the training has been completed, so it needs to be somebody who can acknowledge that. Now on the second page of this form, when you guys download the form, you'll see there's some instructions that basically say what I've already said right there. It gives you a place to upload the document, which is also on our website. So you can go on there and upload this document to us, send it to us with the, with the um, training verifications that your employee has. Now I wanted to put this extra section in here, what is considered training for section three items. So you get the idea. So, so we know up front, and you can review this. Obviously, if you need to access a scaffold, they need scaffold user training. If they're going to a body harness, they need body harness training. Now, you know, see note, look down here at the bottom. It may be done in combination with fall protection, but they need to have been taught how to wear a harness. Wearing a respirator is a special item here. You know, I need we need respirator training, fit testing, and medical evaluation. We need all three things to prove that they can wear a respirator. And you'll just go down through here and you can see for yourself. Forklift has a couple items, forklift training and assessment. Have they been trained and assessed? The items that we need for this is not necessarily a forklift card or a certification. Um, it can be a roster sheet stating that um, John Smith has had um, competent person excavation training, you know, date, super, you know, trainer. We need that information. We're going to put it in our system so we know who on site is trained to do what occupations and they're allowed and authorized by your company to do those while they're on the site. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Safety Plus. Thank you very much.